All righty, folks. Well, I have had quite a few questions about how to request a power wheelchair or manual wheelchair. So we're going to go through one, one section of it uh, because there is a lot of information, but I'm going to tackle Medicare first. So let's do that right now. So today I'm going to address the how and the why and the what, all the W's, <laughs> because it's not easy. You know, Medicare is complicated, and uh, yes, I have different glasses, so you get over that for a second. <laughs> We're going to look at Medicare and the steps that they require for uh, a power wheelchair, a manual wheelchair, or a scooter, because scooters were also uh, in that list of allowed uh, DMEs, which is durable medical equipment. So that's the area in which it's going to be covered financially. So let me just open the page uh, because there are some, some steps. So um, the first thing is, you know, the question that's always asked is, how do I get a, a wheelchair? So um, that is a face-to-face. -face. You have to do a face-to-face -face with your primary care physician. So, and you have to talk about how this came about, you know, in terms of uh, do you want a, or why do you want a wheelchair or a scooter? Uh, so, you know, the doctor has, because in the request has to be accompanied by a diagnosis. So it, they just don't give out wheelchairs just because. And then you'll say, but why, Lisa? <laughs> the reason why is because, you know, when you start to use, when you start to use a power, a power wheelchair or a manual wheelchair or a scooter, um, then you begin to use certain muscles less. And that's what Medicare is a little concerned about and your doctor too. So you have to um, consider that. Uh, the doctor's going to be looking after your health. Is this a good thing or not? Is it going to affect you in a negative way um, or in a positive way? So, you know, wheelchairs and doctors have different opinions across the board. Um, but, you know, a therapist, a physical therapist might have a totally different opinion than your primary care doctor. You know, your primary care doctor might say, well, let's, let's look at a, a, an evaluation with a, with a physical therapist first because they want to make sure that this is a good decision. If you don't use it, your legs, you lose it. You really do. Your muscles start, you know, losing more and more strength, and then you're in a pickle. So um, is this a time to get a scooter or a power wheelchair or a manual wheelchair? So that, that's the question. And what diagnosis is it going to be attached to? Because uh, there has to be a diagnosis of some kind to justify <laughs> the DME. So, so you have to get a written prescription from your doctor or other treating uh, provider, and that could be a doctor in uh, physical therapy. That can be your primary care doctor. So, and there has to be some notes attached to it, which is saying this is a diagnosis, this is the problem, and this is what we've done to treat it. And at this time, we believe that this scooter or power wheelchair or manual wheelchair <coughs> is going to address it appropriately. So then you have to get a prior approval for certain types of power wheelchairs because those are pretty hefty and pretty expensive. So are the manual wheelchairs. But <coughs> so before you get either a power wheelchair or a scooter, you must have a face-to-face -face exam with your doctor. The doctor will review your needs, okay, and help you decide if you can safely operate. You know, power wheelchair is, is a pretty hefty piece of equipment, and so is a scooter. 
So they want to make sure that you have the dexterity and you have the skills to be able to drive it. It's, it might take a little uh, practice with a physical therapist or occupational therapist to make sure you are safe doing so. Because um, you don't want to hurt somebody else. You don't want to hurt yourself. You don't want to make holes in your walls at home. <laughs> so, so a couple of things go into this. It's not just I'm going to go out and purchase my own wheelchair. You know, you really have to look and see it does the power wheelchair fit in your home? Can you get it in, in in can you get the power wheelchair in your home? Does it fit through the hallways? Does it fit in your kitchen? So that does it fit in your bathroom? So there's all kinds of things you have to consider before jumping into this. Uh, so you know the doctor will review your needs and help you decide if this is a safe, safely operate the device. And then the doctor will submit a written order telling Medicare why, why, here comes the why, you need the device and that you're able to operate it. Uh, manual wheelchair, I think, is a little different. Uh, you just need a little bit of training, um, longer term. Uh, but the power wheelchair, you need to understand, it's pretty hefty in terms of weight, and you don't want to hurt yourself or others. So uh, that has to be considered. And if you're someone who's already had a power wheelchair for quite a few years, then no problem. It's, it's more of a renewal than anything else. So I had a good page here. Here we go. <coughs> so wheelchairs and scooters. Medicare Part B uh, covers wheelchairs and power-operated vehicles, scooters, as durable medical equipment, DMEs. Uh, that your doctor prescribes for you uh, in, in your home. So one of the characteristics is that if you have a scooter or a power wheelchair for Medicare, it has to be used in the home. You have to have a need to use it in the home. Okay? So that's, that's a very important um, tip. You must have a face-to-face -face examination, blah, blah, blah. You already know that. <laughs> so your costs in original Medicare. So sometimes in getting these power wheelchairs or scooters, um, you have to rent them first for a little while to make sure that this is a good decision, that it fits, that you don't have to exchange anything. So usually they put you on kind of like a renting type plan. And it feels strange. It's like, you know, I ordered this already. Why am I renting it? But um, it's just to make sure that probation time to make sure it works. And uh, you may be able to choose whether to rent or to buy the equipment. Um, yeah. So I'm telling you these, these power wheelchairs, scooters, scooters are cheaper than power wheelchairs. However, they're a little bit harder to maneuver the scooters. Um, so... <coughs> And, you know, either one, the scooter, the power wheelchair, the manual wheelchair, has to be written up as the patient needs it in home. Okay? That's really important. There we go. The DME supplier, you're going to have a company that's going to provide you with, with the equipment. Okay? But they have to be in, in, in contract with, with Medicare. Because otherwise, it's going to come out of your pocket 100%. So the supplier has to have some kind of enrollment in Medicare. They have to belong and have a contract with Medicare. So that's one of the first things you need to ask. Are you signed up and are you enrolled in Medicare? Because <coughs> I don't want to end up you know, purchasing this completely out of pocket because those are pretty expensive uh, items. It's also important to ask a supplier if they participate in Medicare before <laughs> you get the DME. So before that DME comes in front of you, you need to be clear about that. If suppliers are participating in Medicare, they must accept assignment, uh, which means they can charge you only the coinsurance and Part B deductible for the Medicare approved amount. So they can't charge you for everything and just say, um, now we'll wait to see how much. No. They can only charge you the coinsurance. 
and if you have anything left of your deductible. If suppliers aren't participating and don't accept assignment, there's no limit on the amount they can charge you. So you'll be paying out, out of pocket 100%. So be careful with that. Now, some people just go out and, and purchase their wheelchair or their scooter uh, because they need it, because they've decided that they don't need it in home. They just want to use it outside. <coughs> so <laughs> that won't work for Medicare because they want to make sure that you truly have a need. Because if you're just going to use it outside, then you're, you're walking okay in home. And that's what it tells Medicare. You're walking fine in home and you're just needing some help outside. <coughs> and they won't cover that for that reason. They won't. So uh, my power wheelchair, I use it <coughs> about 30% in home. So, and then the rest I use it outside. So other insurance, if you have private insurance, then it's a little bit easier. Um, they will rent the unit to you for a little bit, and then if everything goes well, then then they'll uh, put in the rest of the money for it, and then it's yours. <laughs> so I know that sounds strange, but that's what they do, and probably to protect themselves and, and yourself of not ending up with, with a unit that um, <coughs> that you don't need or didn't quite fit, uh, but uh, that's that's important to know. Things to know. So Medicare is putting things to know. You may have to get prior approval. So sometimes there's a prior authorization that you've heard about a lot. So <coughs> you might have to wait for that. So uh, for certain types of power wheelchairs, there's all different kinds of power wheelchairs. And I think it gets into the area of complex power wheelchairs. Um, there's, there's regular power wheelchairs and there, there's complex power wheelchairs in which it's a specialized wheelchair for you. <coughs> um, it's more complicated. It's a more complex power wheelchair that has special headrests and has special um, footrests or might have special cushions, all that kind of stuff. So it might have a variety of things to accommodate to your body type. So, um, so you know, the certain types of power wheelchairs. So not all power wheelchairs are required before Medicare will cover the wheelchair cost. So, <coughs> so first of all, your DME supplier should request prior authorization. Sometimes they don't need to, but in some cases they do. So. Send the request and required documents to Medicare. And there's a, there's a way in which they need to do that. All paperwork, and I'm not kidding about this, all paperwork must be filled out completely and correctly. So you don't need to do anything. The supplier, the doctor, if you saw a therapist, all of them combine, put in their notes and <coughs> their observations their opinions, everything else about the, the wheelchair, and then they submit it to Medicare. If there's any lines that are not filled in, um, they will reject it. So it's really important for everybody to put in their corresponding piece and for it to be submitted and not submit it before then. If your physician prescribes one of these wheelchairs to you, your DME supplier will usually submit a prior authorization request and all documentations, all of it, to Medicare on your behalf. Medicare will review the information to make sure that you're eligible and meet all requirements for power wheelchair coverage. Your Medicare coverage and benefits will stay the same, so no problem. Uh, and you shouldn't experience delays getting the item you need. It used to be that we used to have to wait weeks and weeks and months and months and months to get a power wheelchair. And so Medicare is trying to be much better in that. Uh, we'll, we'll see how, how it's going. Medicare, just so you know, has um, just made the step of approving power wheelchairs. They used to battle left and right, you know, with patients and they 
they would ask why. Why do you need this power wheelchair? How are you going to use it? You know, so there would be a struggle there with Medicare in the past, uh, but now they've they've approved power wheelchairs and and so it's going much smoother. I wouldn't say completely smooth, but uh, much smoother than in the past. Medicare finds you don't medically require a power wheelchair, so this is your prior authorization request may be may be denied. This Medicare will find you. Um, not eligible in regards to the diagnosis. Medicare doesn't get enough information to make a decision. So that's when the form is not complete. The notes are not clear enough. The diagnosis is not clear. The notes from the doctor are kind of wishy-washy. <laughs> so <laughs> that's when it gets muddy. So if Medicare needs additional information, your DME supplier may resubmit your prior authorization request. So that's when they need to really look at the notes and make sure they're really uh, written, make sure that the form is completely filled out. So it's, it's Medicare is very persnickety about the forms and the notes and the diagnosis and all this kind of stuff. So just so you know. Um, so, you know, they want to make sure that this is an item you really need. If you decide to skip insurance and purchase it on your own, I think it would be healthy and uh, important to let your doctor know that you purchased a scooter and you're using it for XYZ. I think it's important because that means you're experiencing some uh, pain, some difficulty, and the doctor should be aware and to make sure that they help you with that. Um, so I just want to, that's kind of like the, the, the run of the mill for uh, the power wheelchairs. I'm going to put it in a second video because I don't want it to be too long. Um, some recommendations when you are going to get a wheelchair or a power wheelchair or a scooter. All right. So we will leave it at that if you have any further questions about Medicare or um, the process that you need to go through, uh, just um, post the question down below. <laughs> All right. Uh, feel free to uh, like. That helps me a lot. Or to subscribe if you want to. Uh, it's completely free. And make any comments, any questions, any share uh, that you want to. Uh, also share your experiences for others to uh, be able to be aware of, uh, you know, how things are going now for power wheelchairs. All right, take care, and um, feel free to look at the videos that show up here at the bottom, and I'll see you in those next videos.